Okay, so this video is about finding the local max and local min of polynomials, or, or just max and min of polynomials. All right, so let's take this example we have here on the screen. Negative x cubed plus 5x squared, subtract 3x, subtract 3. And this is the graph for it here. All right, so one of the, when we say local max or local min, we mean the minimum in the area. That is a local max. Local as in, it is the highest point in its area. So we call it a local max. This is a local min, a local minimum. This is the lowest point in the area. All the points around it are above it. That's what we mean by local max and local min. Then we have a thing called absolute max. Absolute max. Or min. Would be things like this, like a parabola could have absolute min. This would be an absolute min. Absolute minimum. So it's the lowest point available, lowest point ever. It would never go lower than that point. So it's the absolute minimum. This would be absolute maximum. Highest point ever. So that'd be an example of absolute maximum. This graph doesn't have absolute minimum because it never stops going downward after this. It goes down forever. So you don't have an absolute min. You don't have an absolute max because on this side, it never stops going upward. So it goes up for infinity. So it doesn't have an absolute max of min. But you do have local maxes and mins. And if you can see what it is, like this graph, I can clearly see the coordinate there. Like you can clearly see that. You can go ahead and say what that is. That coordinate is at 3, 6. One coordinate is 3, 6 for the local max. Over here, local minimum. You really don't know what that is. It's not really halfway. I don't know if it's quarter way, quarter of the way, a third of the way, 20% of the way. Don't really know. So because of that, it's really nice that they would use algebra to figure out what exactly that coordinate is. Why do we want to know that coordinate? This could represent the path of a rocket ship or, you know, something that we actually want to, want to measure. And we might want to figure out the, the depth this rocket is going to go. So we know if it's going to crash into something or whatever else. So it's important to be able to find out this coordinate. So that's what we want to, that's what we want to find out. And since the graph can't give us a, exactly what it is, we have to use this original equation to figure out what it is. Now, how are we going to use the original equation to figure out what it is? Let's understand this. We learned already about slopes of tangent lines. If I made a tangent line for this point right here, it would be a horizontal line. Horizontal lines have a slope of zero. Horizontal lines have a slope of zero. All right. So because of that, this is also a tangent here, also be a horizontal line, and also give you a slope of zero. So essentially what I'm looking for is when can I find a tangent that's going to have a slope of zero is what I want to find. So basically what you want to do is find a derivative, set that derivative equal to zero. Because you remember that derivative represents the slope of the tangent. And that's how we can figure out what those coordinates are. All right, so. Uh, if you see anything you didn't already know, I'll write as a note. I'm about to clear up some of the screen, though. All right, so this is how we're going to do it. First, we're going to take the equation. y equals negative x cubed plus 5x squared. Subtract 3x. Subtract 3. And then we're going to take the derivative of it. y prime. That would be negative 3x squared plus 10x to the first, subtract 3. That would be the derivative of that original equation. Now, what I want to know is, when is this derivative? When is this slope of the tangent line? When is that going to equal 0? This is just my question. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place it with 0, substitute 0 in, make 0 equals a negative 3, x squared plus 10x subtract 3. That's a quadratic equation. We have lots of ways we can solve a quadratic equation. You could, you learn from the summary review that you could factor it. You could uh, use quadratic formula. You 
You can use completing the square, graphing. Any of these methods will work. Every one of these methods will lead you to the same answer. So your thing is you want to pick one, whichever one you feel best with. Um, I'm really good at factoring. Also pretty good at quadratic formula. So it would be the first two I would think to if I didn't have a graph and calculator. If I had a graph and calculator, I'd just graph it. All right, so let's say I want to use quadratic formula and actually solve this to figure out what makes it zero. All right, so let's do that. I hope you didn't need any of that stuff as a note. If, if so, you want to go back and rewind it and get that, those options of solving it, but I had to erase it. Anyway, so this is a quadratic formula, and we know this is A, this is B, this is C. I'm not going to social intelligence by explaining the quadratic formula, so we'll go straight to it. I'll do all the math. You get x equals 3 and 1 third. That means if I plug in 3 or a third into the original equation, I'm sorry, to the derivative equation, I should get zero. Meaning at three, I have a horizontal tangent of zero, which we already knew. Three six was the local max. And here, apparently, x is a third. So I need to know the output for y there. How can I find out? I, I can plug it in. I can figure out the output for y there. So y, no, not y prime, y. Because you know, if I plug it in y prime, I'm going to get zero because that's what we proved. Now I should plug it in for y, the original equation. All right, because I'm looking for what the original equation is at the third. So it's going to be um, at negative one third to the third plus five times one third squared. Subtract three times a third. Subtract three. I'm going to plug it into my calculator, though, just to save some computation. So the answer should be roughly negative 3.5. Just around about. So we have a local min here at this place. Uh, it's a local min. And the coordinate for it is one-third and negative 3.5. Roughly. So that's my local min, and that's my coordinate for the local max. And that's how I do it. Um, ordinarily, I use both of these answers for x, but I already knew this one. I already knew the output at 3, because I can clearly see it from the graph. All right, let's try another one of those. You can pause the video, copy it, anything you need as a note. I'm about to erase this whole screen. Okay, so we've got a new graph. In this graph, this is the origin right here. This would be the x-axis, and this would be the y-axis. And I purposely didn't put numbers on this graph, so I think we all meet at like actual coordinates. So I don't want to make it that easy where you can actually see all the points to it. I actually want to use the algebra. So anyway, given this equation here, you want to find the coordinates for the local max and local min. So we're still finding the max and min of this polynomial. So you'll start off with the equation. Y equals the x to the fourth. Subtract 2x squared plus 3. And then step one, you find the derivative. So y prime is 4x cubed, subtract 4x plus zero, uh, plus zero. So if that's the case, that's the derivative of it. And we want to know when this slope makes it to zero. So that's the slope of zero. There's a horizontal tangent, so it's the slope of zero. There's a horizontal tangent, so it's the slope of zero. And the slope of zero is where it changes directions again, right? That's where it bottoms out. So that's when I know I have horizontal tangent of zero, and I know that's the lowest point it gets. So those are all the local max and local mins. So um, you would find out when that slope is zero. So I would set zero equal to that derivative, 4x cubed subtract 4x. And this is a simple equation where you could find the GCF to factor out. It's simplified. You might recognize the GCF, GCF there is 4x. So I have to divide it out from each one. It leaves you with x squared, subtract 1. And then you can set each factor equal to 0. So 4x equals 0. And then x squared, subtract 1, equals 0. So when you divide this one by 4, you get x equals 0 as one solution. And the other solution is when you solve that one, by adding 1 to both sides, x squared equals a 1. So the square root of 1 is positive or negative 
point. So when we solve it, so what we get is three answers. We got a positive or a negative one and a zero. So we want to know when the original equation, what the, what the output is for the original equation at all those points. There's so many, I might as well use a table. I want to know the output at negative one, at zero, and at positive one. So I'm really running out of space. So I want to, I don't really want to erase any of this stuff. So uh, basically, you can pause the video and find those outputs now. I can just tell you what they are. So here they are. All right, so I took negative one, plugged it into all those points. And I got negative one to the fourth, subtract two times negative one plus three. So that gives you a positive one plus two plus three. So that's six. So a negative one output's at six. Chances are at positive one, output's going to be the same thing. I kind of see this happening here. So I'm going to go ahead and go on a limb here and say at positive one, that's going to be six as well. At zero, I'm plugging zero for all those things. That's kind of easy to do. If I plug in zero there, it goes to zero. Plug in zero here, this whole thing goes to zero. I'm left with three. So at zero, output's three. So those are my coordinates. Um, so apparently, this is a um, min. This is the negative one is over here. It's a local min, to be more exact. And this one is a local max. Oh, no, no. Local minimum. Both of those are local minimums. And the one in the middle there is a local max. So this one is a local max. Does this one have an absolute min? Actually, it does. So even better than local min, we should call that an absolute min. Why is it absolute min? Does this graph ever go beneath this spot? It doesn't. So instead of calling it a local min, it would be better to call it absolute min. An absolute max. So that's the difference between the two. All right, so that's it. That's how you could find out the coordinates for local min and local max. Now, there's one more thing. Sometimes that slope of the tangent line at being zero isn't a local min and local max. There's this other thing called inflection point. Let's talk about that now. All right, so this is the last graph. And if you look at this equation, it flattens out right here. Technically, you can make a horizontal tangent at that point. It kind of goes through the graph, um, but technically you make a horizontal tangent through that point. So because of that, it's not a local max or min because it's not the highest point or the lowest point. It just flattens out and then starts to go up later. So this is called an inflection point. Inflection point. It's not a max or min. And you don't really know that it's not going to be one. It's not going to be max or min unless you actually see the graph or you can kind of test points around it. For example, if you found the derivative of this equation, y equals to x cubed plus 2, the root of that would be 3x squared. And you set that equal to 0. If 0 equals to 3x squared, you find that x has to be, or you divide by 3, and 0 equals x squared, right? So if you square root 0, you get x equals 0. So positive and negative 0 don't really matter. It's going to be 0. So in that case, you you don't really have, it looks like a horizontal tangent or anything. It looks like anything else you saw, but you don't really know if it really is um, a max or a min unless you test the point just to the right of it and just to the left of it. So you could try a negative point 0.1 and plug that in for x, a positive point 0.1, plug that in for x, I see what those outputs are. And if this output is is higher than the other one, then I like the same thing with that equal distance around the, around the center of it. It's um it's not gonna be a max. Pretty sure you might still have questions about that, but I would always test with the graph just to make sure it's a max or a min. We'll talk more about it if you got questions in class. So that's all I have. Good luck.